Call of the Wild is the story of Buck, a, a domestic dog, dognapped from his uh, happy home in California and transported to the Yukon to be in service um, as, a, uh, as a member of a dog team. And his, uh, his life is hard. Uh, the job is hard. His life is hard. He's not necessarily treated as well as he might be until he finds himself in the hands of uh, John Thornton, the character that I play. He's got three stages pretty much in the film where he starts off as this big sloppy puppy that, that is just washing through the space and unaware of, of his, you know, his, 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 the space he takes up and, and, and there's just this abandonment and oblivion to, to anything else but food and comfort, right? And, and so everything is sort of disjointed and loose and, and, and just in this state of sort of abandoned bliss. And, and then when he gets captured, all of that sort of comes to a halt, a screeching halt, and he's thrown into this world where he's, he's, he's in a state of, of shock almost, where he's like, it's like grow up today or die. And, and, um, and that, that's the beginning of his growing period. That's, that's the beginning of, it, of the growth of the character. Harrison Ford is playing John Thornton. That is the last character that um, owns Buck. He doesn't really own Buck. He's a companion. He's the guy that brings Buck to his final destination. And they're more companions. The relationship that they share is more of a father and a son. And Buck plays the role of a child that Thornton had lost. And Thornton is able to take Buck on this final journey that he'd always dreamed of taking his son. And he completes that journey. The emotion exists in the DNA of the book. Uh, but what Michael was really able to do was to change enough and accentuate enough to make it cinematic and to make it really come out because the the hardest part of it is that the hero journey that buck endures and goes through and experiences any hero journey has some tough moments in it and what michael always knew how to do was to was to take you through those and at the end make you realize how those tough moments had created the character that you so loved. I think it couldn't be a better time for people to, to rediscover this story. I think that there's a lot of stressful things going on and there's a lot of uncertainty. And the neat thing about this character of Buck is how he faces those challenges and comes out of them better than he went in. As much as the story is about the character I play, John Thornton's rescuing Buck, Buck is actually instrumental in the recovery of John Thornton, the rescue of John Thornton from his past and allows him to lift himself above his past, regain his own respect for himself and to go back into the life he once lived and set things straight.
one of the most fun moments for me in this film was when I was acting alongside Harrison Ford on that at that moment, and and he looked at me, and I felt that I understood him his own excitement and his emotion of, of becoming free and, and, and to, to just go on this, this blind journey. In the book, Thornton goes through different situations with Buck, but I don't think his character is super well-defined. And I think one of the wonderful things that Harrison did throughout this whole process was he was able to find that character, create that character, and really define what it was gonna be. When Harrison was acting, alongside me or to me I was trying to become the best listener I could by by allowing his inflection and his emotions his subtleties affect me and then give me a feeling and from that feeling I I would understand so I was understanding feelings rather than words When we were shooting the film, we didn't have Buck. Buck was still being manufactured in the, um, in the computer lab. Um, and we had, instead, a very talented actor named Terry Notary, who, um, who stood in for Buck. And the relationship between Buck and uh, John Thornton was a relationship between myself and Terry Notary. One of the great gifts of this whole experience was, and this was really Ryan Stafford's idea, was to bring in Terry Notary, who was a Cirque du Soleil artist, uh, to, in the, course of the, in the course of shooting, to play Buck. I got a call actually from Ryan Stafford, who I'd worked with on Planet of the Apes, and he said, we're doing this film called Call of the Wild. And I was, I was instantly sold by the knowing the book and um, having grown up, you know, reading it and loving the story. And I said, well, what you, is it that you want me to do? And he said, play Buck. And I said, I'm in. <laughs> it was pretty simple. One of the things that we took a major evolutionary step on was instead of just having a marker for where Buck is to be, a tennis ball or what have you, we decided to actually put a real person in there. We hired Terry Notary, who's one of the, um, one of the premier motion specialists in the movie industry, and we have him playing Buck. So he spent uh, many hours studying dogs and learning their mannerisms and practicing their mannerisms, and he has then brought those mannerisms and the emotionality of the main character to the set. It was an odd idea, frankly, at first, that I didn't know how Harrison Ford would react to it. I thought it was potentially kind of silly because you've got a grown man who's on all fours, and he sort of constructed these prosthetic front legs, who's on all fours in a funny gray suit playing a dog. It turned out to be a genius move because Terry gives such a committed performance that it has improved every actor's performance in the course of the movie because otherwise these actors would just be acting against empty space. So he was able to replicate the movement and the feeling of a dog um, for, for the, for the for the photography, for the actors, for, for to help block scenes, to create movement, and to give us something to look at, which wasn't there. The way the story's been written and laid out, it is definitely from Buck's point of view. Uh, now, along the way, Buck uh, interacts with some, some just world-class actors, and uh, Bradley Whitford and Omar Sy, uh, and Dan Stevens and then Harrison Ford in that story order. Um, so keeping the camera, keeping the shots about Buck and keeping the point of view of each scene from Buck's point of view, I think will allow you to track his storyline all the way through. 
he's one of my favorite actors, and I was so excited to finally like meet him and, and work with him just a little bit. Um, he is Buck's original owner, and he loves Buck unconditionally. And I think the unspoken thing is that he's probably indulged Buck just a little bit. I think Buck is a little spoiled, and he has the run of the town, and people just... <laughs> people just give him the room that he needs to do whatever he's going to do and they tolerate him and stuff like that um uh so he's he's a real nice guy he's a nice guy and um yeah Bradley Woodford he's did a great job I think one of the genius moves um in terms of the casting of this movie was Omar Sy uh I from the beginning said I really want someone who's a native French speaker to play this role just because I have a acute ear for accents, and um, I, I didn't want a phony sounding French accent. I wanted a real a, a real French person. Omar C and Kara G, uh, they just have such light and warmth and humor, and they've got a great chemistry between them. Um, they're partners in this whole thing. And I think Francoise is much more practical. And Perrault is much more, I think, just maybe emotional and, and a little bit more impetuous. And uh, the whole thing starts because he goes down to this dog cellar and he's supposed to come back with two dogs. And instead, he comes back with a dog that's two times too big. <laughs> and that's Buck. It was, a, it was an absolutely genius move uh, because Omar's understanding of the character and sort of his innate warmth was so right. His innate warmth and his innate charm was just so right for the role of Perot. You could just see how this is a guy who would fall for Buck in this odd mixture of dogs that he put together, um, which, was the, which is the team that's ultimately led by Buck. Dan Stevens is fantastic because he is our Hal. And Hal is this rather wealthy man who's um, looking for some gold, brings his family along, and he's completely ill-prepared for what he's about to embark on. And everyone takes one look at him, including Buck, and they realize, oh, no, this isn't going to work out. This is going to end very, very badly. And it does. Um, he brings great character and energy to this villainous role. And um, last time we, we screened the film, we got a real cheer when, when Buck and he had to face off at the end, and it was really neat. But he does such a wonderful job, and he was so, so wonderful to work with. Did such a great job being our, our villain, Hal. Janusz Kaminski, I had always dreamed of meeting him and working with him someday, but I finally got to meet him and got to actually work with him. And he is so energetic. I was so impressed with like the amount of energy that he would bring to the set every single day. Like, right away. He was on it. He was talking about different shots, why he wanted to shoot things a certain way. I learned a ton about just like the way he would approach a scene. With the overarching goal of everything being completely in dead photo real, it will be the most beautiful version of real that, that you'll have ever seen. It's going to be the most idyllic day in the Yukon. It's going to be the most perfect sunset over, uh, over the Napa Valley. Um, it is going to be this storybook quality uh, to hold this just magical vision um, for the story to take place that's gonna be intercut with, these, with sets and photography that have also had the storybook vision applied to it. So the two will just blend together beautifully to make this heightened reality. Every scene he would approach with a very methodical, very, very smart way of doing things so that by the end of the day, we really had everything we needed by the end of the day. Um, which was for me one of my greatest stresses. In animation you sit around and go, well we need this and that, and you just in a sense you keep shooting the entire time until you ultimately you know, just run out of time. Um, and you just shoot for years, but you have only a certain amount of time to get a certain thing and, and um, seeing how he would get that. Watching him light and watching him take a set from the way we saw it when we first walked onto it cold to just being you know, filled with life and laughter and, and characters interacting and moving around and stuff like that. It's really, really incredible. Just very impressive. The thing that was so remarkable about the whole experience with Chris is that everything about his personal sensibility and kind of his emotional sensibility 
and so on was right for this movie. And the most important task that a director had to have in order to make this movie, and that's what I found out in the process of looking for directors, was somebody who had the technical capabilities which an animation director and an illustrator like Chris has is to create a emotionally compelling character out of nothing. So that's what Chris brought to it in terms of his whole animation background. We're already preparing uh, some steps to take to make sure that we are matching uh, Janusz's lighting and Janusz's camera movements. Um, well, uh, so I'll break down the two segments. Janusz and, and cinematography and then Stefan and, and production design. So with cinematography, uh, we are taking significant lighting references of every single setup that we do. Every single setup, we walk the gray balls and the chrome balls through the camera and the lighting. And then we walk a, um, a dog that closely resembles the coloration of Buck through the lighting. And then we also take HDRIs and this process called round shots. And we're just, we, we know where every light is. We know the intensity and value of every single light and every single shot. And we're able to replicate that exactly. The technology that we're using is really the most cutting edge uh, technology because we're not using motion capture. We're using uh, true CG, computer graphic technology, to create a, uh, to create, uh, a real, a photo real experience. It's not a fairy tale. It's a story, it's a gritty story. It's a story of survival, perseverance. Um, uh, and I think that it's, it's a story that anybody can relate to because whether you're young or old, I think you either have experienced things or you sense that there's a truth inside this story that, that, uh, that you might be living yourself. One of the key emotional satisfactions of the, of the story is that Buck, who has suffered at the hand of man, finds a new life in the wild. And, and we, having seen what he's been through, what he's endured, celebrate uh, his new freedom and understanding of another way of life. Everybody's going to find a piece of themselves in Buck. Buck starts off the movie as a kid, and throughout he goes through adolescence and then into adulthood and becoming the leader. So I think everybody's going to be able to relate to that. Everybody's going to find a piece of Buck that they find in themselves. Um, you know, he's not just a dog. He's he is our main character, and his arc is complex and it goes it has many layers. And I think um, that his journey will be just one that. Uh, his journey will be one for the ages. You just make sure that you don't exclude any audience member. We want to make sure that if anybody comes in and they're younger or if they're older, everybody will get, they'll get something out of the story on their particular level. Thank you.